Hello and welcome to the Maxillar tutorials presented by the Faculty of Electrical Engineering in Belgrade. The goal of these videos will be to understand and learn how to write programs for data flow architectures. There will be some requirements for these videos. First, uh, you have to know C, second, Java, and you have to know something about data flow architecture. But if you don't, I will take an opportunity to point out several important facts about data flow architectures. First of all, they directly contrast the traditional von Neumann architectures. They do not have a program counter. The executional instruction is based on the availability of input arguments to the instructions. The order of instruction execution is unpredictable. In other words, their behavior is indeterministic. In this tutorial, I will explain our plan for fast and efficient learning through four simple steps, and every step will include a video of its own. In part one, as you can see, we will prepare the integrated development environment. First, uh, we will install a virtual machine, and why we do that? Uh, we need an Eclipse-like environment for execution of our data flow programs. In part 2, uh, we will write our first data flow program, a simple Hello World example. Uh, in this part, you will learn what are the necessary parts of a functional Maxilla program and how to implement them. First, we will write the CPU code. Uh, second, uh, the data flow kernel, and we have to connect them with the manager. Why I mentioned C and Java? The only part written in C will be the CPU code and all other parts will be written in Java. In part 3 we will test our program written in part 2. Uh, you will learn how to test your data flow program and we will write the simrunner, of course written in Java. In part 4 we will implement a moving average problem. I suppose you heard about it, but if you didn't, uh, it is a simple array manipulation problem which will illustrate how we will write more complex data flow programs. We will write the CPU code and all other parts that I mentioned in part 2 and 3. Have in mind that we will work in a simulation mode, which means that we will not be using real data flow hardware. So don't be surprised if the execution time of data flow programs turns out to be even greater than the very CPU execution time of itself. Uh, this is not the only reason for slow execution time. I will not go through details on this, but I just want you to know that some algorithms cannot give better performance on data flow machines even, they, even if they are very well written. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions feel free to comment. For more information see the description below the video and I hope I see you in the next part.